Stevia, is it healthful or hurtful? Is this non-sugary sweetener beneficial or is it actually detrimental to your health? Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead where we talk about country living, practical steps of, of living the country life, but we also talk about scientific studies at looking at health and natural products. And we look at the research. So if you're interested, uh, hit the subscribe button to see more of our upcoming videos. And let's look into the actual research. But before we do, when you're talking about a non-sugary sweetener, you one of the first things that really comes to people's mind is diet soda. And now I won't go into the research on this video because that's not what we're going to be talking about here. But when it comes to diet soda, diet sodas are fantastic if you're looking to gain weight. What? You're thinking, what? Did you mean lose weight? No, no. The research actually shows the opposite, that if you want to gain weight, make sure you start drinking diet soda. So no, you don't want to drink diet soda. Nobody really wants to drink diet soda. They're actually just simply not beneficial. You actually gain more weight drinking diet soda than you do sugary soda. But back to this right here, back to Stevia. We're going to look at some of the research. We're going to look at both sides of the equation. And in the end, I'll give you a little bit of my own insight and you can choose for yourself what to do with it. But let's look at the research. What about Stevia and blood pressure? So here's a great study that which it was a randomized double blind placebo controlled study that looked at the results of taking 500 milligrams of stevicide, an extract from stevia, for two years compared to placebo and its effect on blood pressure. What was the result? Well, they found that this stevia extract lowered the average systolic blood pressure by 10 points and the diastolic was lower by an average of six points and this with, without any significant side effects. Now, this is fantastic. So as far as lowering your blood pressure, this is actually beneficial for that. But I, I wanna state right here, there's many things you can do health-wise to lower your blood pressure. Going on a whole food, especially a plant-based whole food diet, you can lower your blood pressure significantly by doing that. And then you wouldn't necessarily have to do something like this, but this actually can benefit in this area. But let's go on to our next study. So what about stevia and diabetes? Because you look at it and you say, okay, well, it's not sugary, but it tastes extremely sugary. By the way, what they say is that stevia is 100 to 300 times sweeter than white table sugar. And when I hear that, I think, how could that possibly be true? I mean, I've literally just taken a leaf and stuck it in my mouth and it's sweet, but 100 to 200 times sweeter. I mean, to me, it seems that's hard to believe. Like, like if it were 300 times more sweet, it seems like your head would just explode or something like that, you know, uh, but it doesn't. And so I, what they probably mean is you, you can take such a small amount in comparison with the amount of sugar and it will give the same intensity of sweetness with a very small amount of stevia. But what about diabetes and stevia? Let's look at the research. A double-blind clinical trial was conducted looking at diabetic patients either having a sweet tea with 2% stevia or sucralose, and the tea was consumed after fasting. So these people had uh, fasting blood sugar levels. They drank a tea either with this or with sucralose. And what was the result? It was that there was no statistically significant rise in blood sugar compared to baseline fasting levels. And there was no statistically significant rise in insulin compared to the baseline fasting levels. I actually wondered that. I thought, well, maybe this tricks your body into thinking you have sugar in your body. And so your body will tell your pancreas to send out the insulin and lower that blood sugar. But in fact, it doesn't raise your blood sugar, nor does it raise the insulin level. So that actually sounded quite beneficial to me. And so I'm thinking, good, this is, this is actually looking really, really promising. But we're not done yet. Let's keep going forward. So here is talking about a sterol in stevia. There is a sterol that is found in beans, apples, and citrus, and also happens to be in stevia, called camphorol. And research in the journal called PLUS ONE reveals that this sterol has been shown to enhance ca cancer cell death, known as apoptosis in certain pancreatic cancer cells. It can increase cancer cell destruction by upwards of 40%. So it's great to know about this 
component that is found in apples, it's found in stevia, it's found in beans and various things that can actually enhance apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. That means that the cancer cell will actually tell itself, all right, let's kill ourselves. Let's, uh, you know, let's destroy ourselves. And that's what it does. So it actually enhances cancer's ability to die, which by the way, would be a good thing. You'd want all of your cancer to die, hopefully, but it at least increases the chances by 40%. So it's not a full on, it's going to kill all cancer. But in this particular, uh, you know, instance, that is actually quite beneficial. But whether or not stevia is beneficial, the good news is that we know that certain, certain plant foods like apples and beans that we just talked about, they also have this same sterol in them. This may be the reason, and I'm not sure the exact reason physiologically why you may have heard the research that apples have been shown to women who eat apples every single day lower their chances of coming down with breast cancer by about 25%. And that's just a very simple thing to do. And apples are great tasting food, especially some of the new flavored apples out there. It's not so new anymore, but like Honeycrisp. There's a daughter of Honeycrisp called Evercrisp. And uh, these are not genetically modified. They're natural uh, hybridization that uh, just mixing together a Fuji and a Honeycrisp and you get an Evercrisp. And when those things are fresh, they are amazing. So the point is by eating those simply every single day, a woman lowers her chances of having breast cancer by 25%. And that's just one beneficial change to the lifestyle. Unless you're already doing it, then it's not a change at all. But so we know that there's a component in here that may help fight cancer. There's many components in plant foods. We'll talk more and more. We've already talked about cancer in the past. We'll look at more and more research on this, but let's go forward. Here's a study that looks at low dose stevia and then that's the Latin name for stevia there, consumption, they found out that it perturbs or causes trouble to gut microbiota in the mesolimbic dopamine reward system. What on earth is going on here? Well, let's try to break this down a little bit. So in our gut, now I have a whole seminar that I do called the Gut-Brain Connection, where we go like, I don't know, five, six hours of material on research on the gut-brain connection. But what they're finding is that a greater diversity of good gut bacteria makes you less likely to be depressed, have anxious feelings, and it just... It, it, it's worse if you have a less diversity of gut bacteria. But if you have a greater number of good gut bacteria, you're more social, you're more, more outgoing, you're more positive, and you're less depressed. And so we want to have a great diversity of good gut bacteria. And you're going to want to watch back for our other videos coming up on that. And so what we see is this particular plant. Now, I've got to be totally honest with you on this particular study. This study was a, a rodent study that it caused a detrimental effect to the bacteria in the gut of, gut of rodents. And by the way, you are not a rodent and neither am I. So we can't guarantee this, this takes place within human beings, but this is something to really begin to think about. So actually, and knowing this, that if it would do the same thing in humans, that might make it possible that you would be more likely to have inflammation in your body, depression, anxiety, something to really consider. Now, here's another study that kind of gives us more insight into this. What do we see here? So here's a, a study looking at the biological and histological changes produced by sweeteners and the effect on the brain in rats. Once again, you're not a rat, but what they're finding is, is that two of the brain chemicals, serotonin and dopamine, dopamine is, is one of the chemicals in the brain that has to do potentially with pre pleasure or desire. And what they're finding is, at least once again in rodents, that it lowers the amount of secretion of, of these neurochemicals, serotonin and dopamine. And if it lowers levels of these neurochemicals, might it also cause someone to be more likely to be depressed or anxious or at least have a, a negative mental health state? So this is something very interesting, but once again, these studies were not in humans. So we can't guarantee that this is in humans. Now I'm gonna show you some, some incredible information that would be very beneficial to you now just after this, but I wanna say before we go forward and we look at that, what you could do in place of this, uh, it may, you, you may think, oh, I thought you were gonna go another direction, but I wanna show you. So, but before I say that to you, here's the thing. 
I would say, listen, if you ever struggle with depression, anxiety, using something like this right now with where the research is at, I would be very cautious. If you want to try it every once in a while, that's up to you. But to regularly consume this when it can negatively affect two aspects of mental health, potentially anyway, at least in rodents, and if it did it in humans, it might make you more likely to be depressed. So your tongue might be happy, but you might not be. So that might not be the best option. So uh, looking at this, I'm going to show you something so you think, okay, well, you know, since this could be beneficial for diabetes, but I like sweet things. And, and one of the ways you can get that sweet taste that you love so much is by eating fruit. You say, what do you, what do you mean? Isn't that bad for diabetes? This is a massive study that was con conducted in the British Medical Journal and with over 100,000 men and women total anyway. And notice, if you notice on the left side, anything above that line potentially increases the chance of diabetes. Everything below the line uh, actually in general lowers the chances of diabetes. Now you notice to the left that cantaloupe or melons for about 50% of people can actually increase their chances of, of you know high blood sugar or diabetes. But then you move on to things like strawberries and it begins to lower your chances of diabetes. Then you go on to oranges, it lowers it even more. And then you go to peaches, plums, and apricots, it lowers it more. Grapefruit, bananas, apples, pears, prunes. Now look at that right there. Prunes lower your chances of having type 2 diabetes more than plums. What is a prune? It's a dried plum. And it actually lowers your chances. Many people say, oh, you're diabetic. Be careful. Don't have dried fruit because it's full of sugar. It is, but it's in the package that God made it. And when it's in the package that God made it, and think of all of our history. Think, think it through for a moment. In all of our history, what did people do in the off season, unless they lived in the tropics where there was potentially certain fruits year round, for most of the earth, what would they have to do? They dry fruit. It was a natural process and because it keeps the fiber, yes, it's concentrated, but it actually can slow the, the release of the sugar into your system and as a result, be actually beneficial to a diabetic rather than detrimental. This is very, very powerful. So you think, okay, well, what about grapes and raisins? Look at the chart again. So notice that grapes and raisins, raisins, which are dried grapes, are just as beneficial at lowering your chances of type 2 diabetes as having grapes. This is incredible. And then the final one there is blueberries. Blueberries kind of like kick diabetes in the pants, right? They kind of really, really help people with diabetes. So one of the things that you can learn is if you learn to enjoy new things, as you get away from sugary junk foods or, or these artificial sweeteners and you move actually toward fruit, in time your tongue will get used to it and you will begin to delight in fruit like you maybe never have before in your life. I can tell you it happened in my life. I love fruit now. It's actually my favorite food. And now I know that the research shows over 100,000 uh, people in one of the most prestigious journals, the British Medical Journal, shows us that fruit actually lowers rather than increases your chances of type 2 diabetes. There's actually other reasons for diabetes, and I'll show you that in another video. But this is something to think about. So it's really up to you. I'm not telling you you cannot eat this. You do with your own health what you choose. I try to go to the, to the latest research that is out there to find out what is best. And we really know if you're going to get good sugar, if you're going to get good sweet things, stick with food the way God intended it, the whole package that he gave to us. It doesn't mean that it has to be fresh at the time. Even dried is fantastic for you. But fruit is very good. This right here, it's questionable right now. So you, but others will say, but Chad, look, it's good for diabetes. It's good for this. It is. But if something, this is the way that health really should be looked at. That if something is good for diabetes, but bad for depression, we're not sure that it is, but if it were bad for depression, but good for diabetes, I would say that's a net loss, not a net gain. Because if there are things that are good for diabetes and good for depression, why not just eat those? And fruit are actually good for both. So, it is up to you, but if you like this video, hit the subscribe button. We have tons more videos coming out. Check out our old videos. God bless and have a fantastic day.